Hey everyone. So once again, the message that those in the established media, or at least a substantial portion of those in the established media, because yeah, unlike them, I don't play these collective games where I paint with such a broad brush that nobody escapes the accusations. That's that's like I say, that's the area, that's the go-to methodology of collectivists or authoritarian. For me, as a libertarian, I definitely recognize generalities, overarching concepts, and collective endeavors, but because I respect and acknowledge the sovereignty of the individual, I will always point out not all people in the media are this way. There are a few in this country who at least try to counter these kind of narratives. But just like myself, our voices are mostly overlooked, ignored, or suppressed. Headline of the National Post, Canadians want online hate and racism curbed, even at cost of freedom of speech, poll finds. The idea of government intervention was rejected by 8% of the left, 15% of the center, and 58% of the right. This is contributed by Adrian Humphreys, January 25th, 2021. I've already shared this article on most of my social media pages. And I even tried to offer my own explanation and push back against this particular narrative there as well. And I'm just going to kind of reference it before I dig into the article. Does anyone in Canada, other than the few people who consume my content, even know how freedom works anymore? Now, I did <laughs> change that up and put it, people who consume libertarian-oriented content on different pages. But it does seem to be that it's, it's those of us who are libertarians big L or small, are, are basically the only ones out there. The left and the right have both seemingly vacated the space of defending freedom of speech entirely. So it's, it's up to us. We're on our own, folks. It truly is libertarians who are the last line of defense for freedom of speech. And I got to say, we're up against not just one, but a multitude of Goliaths. And it's an uphill battle. Doesn't mean I'll ever give up. I just recognize that there are huge obstacles and barriers in my ability to do so. Namely, a lot of these people who represent the establishment media and these polling institutions who constantly, time and time again, put forth the notion or the idea, first and foremost, that the mob somehow claims to be some legitimate aspect of how freedoms or rights are denied. That's, that's the thing. These, these people, like, how can you be a contributor to these publications and not realize that even if the majority of the mob in a democracy suggests that we should, you know, what, what, what's next? Well, oh, let's just go kill this person. Let's burn witches at the stake, right? Well, if the majority, if the mob says that's okay because it was polled or there was a poll out there and the majority of people said it's okay, are we supposed to just, is that, is that how we pivot now? Is that how we deal with each other? Forget about respecting each other's sovereignty, individuality, all that stuff. Forget about freedom and liberty entirely. Let's just, it's just mob or majority rule. It's just gang psychology and mentality. Is that, is that really how we're functioning today? And like I say, these people in these publications, you don't understand how freedom works? Really? Anyways, let me just read that last little bit here. Inherent and inalienable rights cannot be denied or voted away just because the mob supports attempting to do so. The fact that Adrian Humphreys, a reporter for the National Post, is willing to even entertain that notion tells you all you need to know about what the establishment media represents these days. They are now in bed with government and no longer hold the ruling class to account because they have now joined them in their unaccountability. I mean, like, this is the thing, folks. This is the part that I find most disturbing, right? The very people who are supposed to be the thought leaders in this country and, and at least try in some way or attempt to educate and educate and inform the masses and i mean when you're talking about things that's as important as freedom of speech i mean come on at the very least bare minimum this person this adrian should have at least done what i did and said that rights are not privileges granted to you or afforded to you by government Rights are inherent and inalienable. In other words, government has no authority, no legitimacy, no matter if there's one people who support it or a hundred people out of a hundred. 
who support it. Rights cannot be overridden arbitrarily just because the mob says it's okay. I mean, is that really the kind of world that you want to live in? Who the hell in this place? I just, I just want, who are these people? I would like to talk to them. I just, I, I just, I just, like I said, I don't know who these people are. I don't know who these people are who constantly keep saying, yes, please, please put duct tape over my mouth and the mouth of the rest of the Canadians because we apparently we're just, we just don't know what we're doing. We need somebody to shut us up, to silence us or to suppress our voice for what? That would be my next question. For what? What is the goal? What is the purpose? What is the reasoning behind you siding with the mob the, or the collective in shutting down or silencing people who are just trying to speak openly and freely? Ooh, because of fear. Ooh, because some people might see some bad words. Or because, ooh, they might see hateful things. Really? Really, though? Once again, I don't know who the hell these people are. How they break down demographically, although I'm sure you could probably find that out you know, if you dig down into the data of these polls, right? But I just can't help but think, how, how do you end up coming to this country or being a citizen of this country and not even have the most, most minimal grasp or understanding of, of what freedom even entails or means? I mean, like I say, that's, that's Liberty 101. This is, like I say, the ground level, freedom of speech. I, Really simple concepts, but yet today we're being told that it's no longer important. I guess the most important thing is not offending people. I mean, the people that you might be offended, I mean, just think about the kind of people that are, that we're supposedly not allowed to offend. Are they being held to the same standard? Fuck no. Fuck no. Hell, H-E double hockey sticks, no. Right? So what's up with this? What is up with this? Where's the incentive coming from? Who are these people? Who precisely are they aligning with, right? I mean, what the hell is going on? I mean, even based on the way they're breaking this down with 8% of the left, 15% of the center, and 58, or sorry, 38% of the right. I mean, just the simple fact that you're talking about 8% of the left, 15% of the center, and 38% of the right, I mean, even the way this is broken down, this is this is pure political divide. I mean, come on, it's right here, right? 8% of the left, 15% of the center, and 38% of the right. I mean, that's, a, that's the thing. The most striking thing I find this is only 8% of the left are willing to defend freedom of speech. Like, the left used to represent, think about it, and, and today they still claim to be the representatives of minorities, the LGBTQ, whatever groups, feminists. I mean, people who are typically disenfranchised or oppressed by the mob or the majority, which is why most times that I've known throughout the course of my life, is, it used to be historically anyways, the people on the left, the liberals, right? You or That's the thing. Now, it's not, now we got to really get to the point where you got to just clarity of thought, clarity of language, right? right? Liberals? Not really. The people today who identify as left, well, in honesty, and I guess they're even being honest if they're identifying as the left, is yet, yeah, they're not liberals. So if you're a liberal, yeah, don't consider yourself left, right? Because that's not who you are. That would be, if you're a liberal today, that the way they would square that or the way they would place you on the political compass today, I guess would be to suggest in the center. But even there, only 15% of people in the center you'll find it's more important to de defend freedom of speech rather than hurting people's feelings or having things such as hate speech, right? which is not even definable. Well, in, under American jurisprudence, under American law, as it's acknowledged all the way up to the Supreme Court, there's no such thing as hate speech. Now, this is something that only resides in countries such as Kanakistan. Americans worked that out, sorted that out long ago. Hate speech does not exist. And it's just a political excuse, a political club that people use from either side of the political divide to beat their opponents over the heads with. But even here, as you can see, 38% still isn't great, but 38% is much, much more than double, right? Getting close to almost triple of what it would be for 15% and what? Four times as much as what it would be for eight, maybe even five, actually cl getting close to five times, or well, I guess you could say four times. Anyways, but it's the right, 
it's the people on the right today who are the, the most staunch defenders or supporters of freedom of speech. And, gee, I wonder why that is, right? Because it's people who are perceived as being on the right who are attacked today. It was the people who were perceived to be on the left who were attacked, you know, during the civil rights movements, you know, feminism, the rise of feminism or LGBT. You know, these are people at that time, or oh, they were more than in support. They were fully in support of and massively promoting the importance of freedom of speech. But now that apparently they've gained all the power and their opponents on the right are now the, in the minority position, right? And now the outliers or the outsiders, well, now you, you see how things flip, folks, which is why I don't play the left-right bullshit thing, right? Because I realize that both sides, if you play that kind of game, once again, it's just a zero-sum game where you're just going to fuck one side's going to fuck the other side over. And you know what? As a human being that understands that how that left-right plays out psychologically, it's like, yeah, actually, we our brains are actually comprised of two hemispheres, and we actually have uh, both sides that are somewhat representative of the left-right divides. Like, uh, I don't need, want to destroy any side of my brain. I like to keep it entirely intact. And, and actually, even more important, thinking critically about things and being able to express those thoughts by convert converting them into language as I speak, right? Kind of important. But apparently the left, the center, and even a minority of the right no longer see it that way. Now, of course, it's a poll. Do you really trust the poll? I don't know. But the message these pollsters and this media publication and this Adrian Humphreys is send, sending to us, that the message they're trying to send is, no, freedom of speech is no longer important and must fall by the wayside and be sacrificed to supposedly prevent hate speech or people saying bad things. How well do you think that's going to work out? Most Canadians want the government and social media companies to do more to curtail hateful and racist behavior online, even if it diminishes freedom of speech and privacy, according to a national opinion survey. The findings add to fraught debates over free speech and censorship, the powers of big tech, the boundary between opinions and abuse, and how best to maintain free speech in an omnipresent online world. The poll was commissioned by the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, a crown corporation, and conducted by Abacus Data, an Ottawa-based public opinion research firm that surveyed 2,000 randomly selected Canadian residents from January 15th to 18th. So once again, just pay attention to these organizations and how closely aligned or connected with government they are and just recognize once again the kind of people who are in positions of authority or, or are tr who are controlling the federal government now and ask yourself, is this truly representation or representative of 38 million Canadians or is it just these people trying to put forth that notion in the hopes that the unsuspecting masses will fall in line and say, well, I guess I better fall in line with the herd. Don't want to go against the grain, right? Not in modern-day Kanakistan. That can be quite dangerous to your health and your freedoms. By a two-to-one margin, respondents were more worried about online hate speech than they were about restrictions on freedom of speech and privacy protection. So even privacy. So people are like, take my privacy. Take my freedom of speech. Just don't allow people to say hateful things or insult each other online. Like I say, whether that's true or not, think about what that is suggesting in terms of what Canada or Canadians represent these days. Does that inspire confidence in your fellow man, woman, or citizen? <laughs> it sure shit doesn't for me. Respondents were asked, when it comes to regulating hate speech online, which of the following comes closest to your view? They were given two options. I worry more about the impact of hate speech and racism on people it harms and impact on society overall than on limits to people's freedom of speech or protecting privacy. Was selected by 69% of respondents. <laughs> I mean, you're, that's more than two thirds, right? Two to one. But of course, look at the way it was, the question was uh, presented. So that's the thing with these pollsters, folks, is it truly is all about manipulating and distorting people's true perceptions or ideas and concepts as it pertains to our inherent and inalienable rights and freedoms. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Even I, I, I just can't believe if, if Canadians were, were, weren't given these stupid fucking tricky little games to be played like these polls and the way it's worded like this. You know, if you just ask people, do you support having your tongue ripped out? 
having your ability to speak freely removed from you? That would be the question. Because of course, if you ask Canadians, are you willing or do you support other people, the people that we point out as being bad people, do you support taking their freedom of speech away? Oh, yeah, sure, they're like, yeah. But if you ask them, can I take yours away as well? They'll be like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. I've never done it, right? So everyone, then the excuse will come out as to why their freedom of speech should be respected and maintained. So in reality, once again, even these people that are answering these questions, well, first of all, the pollsters are, are manipulating the language to the point to, to get an outcome that they want, right? That's an, This is an outcome that these people want. Otherwise, you would have worded it in a manner that's much more reflective, I would hope, anyways, uh, of Canadians' genuine thoughts in terms of the freedoms. I, I, I still, to this day, I just can't imagine the mob, the majority, saying, yes, please enslave me. Ah, <laughs> to this day, I know that's a narrative that's being presented to us, but even myself, I'm having a hard time, <laughs> right? believe in any of that shit. I, I just, I really am. Or I, at the very least, I guess maybe it's just wishful or hopeful thinking on my side or for me and, and, and hoping that I, I sure shit hope the majority of the mob in the country I live in aren't looking to put duct tape over my mouth because that sends a pretty bad message, a really bad signal, right? 31% of respondents selected I worry more about governments and social media companies being able to limit the rights of citizens to express themselves and protecting the privacy of users than the impact of hateful or racist behavior online. So, you know, tell you the truth, not even that, you know, it's fairly clear. So if, if like I say, somewhat manipulative in, in the way it's worded, I get it, but still, I mean, come on, come on. If you chose the first one, the 69% of people say, yeah, take away freedom of speech. Once again, well, scary proposition to think that the mob possibly thinks that if you just silence people that you disagree with, that I guess everything just, I guess we all just go back to singing Kumbaya. I, was I, I got to tell you though, the minute somebody tries to put duct tape over my mouth, for some reason, weird as I am, I guess, I, I don't feel all warm and fuzzy and cozy and, and want to have a Kumbaya ah moment with these people, right? Matter of fact, I won't even tell you what I would like to do to a kind of person that wants to put duct tape over my head because I'd probably get in trouble for saying such a thing, right? Because, yeah, in Kanakistan, even standing in defense of your freedoms and liberties, yeah, it's, 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 it's considered wrong thing or a bad thing to do today, which, once again, just speaks volumes. Anyways, folks, there is definitely more information contained with that, and they're you know give you all kinds of numbers and statistics, and right? And I do believe this poll was, what, was a couple thousand people, but supposed to be representative of all 38 million, right? That's how these pollsters play these games. But anyways, once again, the overarching message, I'll place a link to this art article, obviously, in the description of the video below, but the overarching message that's being sent here is the mob, the majority, the collective, they're saying, no, nope, we support denial and suppression of freedom of speech. And we support causing a whole lot of harm to people who say in wrong things or experiencing wrong thing and expressing that verbally. What a trying, trying world we live in, folks. <laughs> it don't look like things are going to get much better anytime soon. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.